everyone, I'm going to go over which portfolios are really nice and why. So let's start here. We have this beautiful website. And as you can see, it's not really like it's simple. I think the great thing here about this website is the amazing intro. So one of the first things your UX portfolio should do is, or your just your general website should do is should introduce you. Employers and potential clients want to know who you are and what you're all about, and they should be able to find this out within seconds of landing on this website. Gloria here has nailed her introduction with a nice approach. First, she treats us to like some bold headline here that describes her in terms of her favorite activities, which is really great. Her other parts of her portfolio are really neat. I mean, you can take a look at her work as well. If we just like click into it, you know, it's really nice and neat in terms of how she's decided to lay it out. Let's take a look at another one. Okay. This one is really, really great. I think the great thing about this one is the storytelling through all the case studies. So they have a pretty simple intro, once again. Moritz over here really gets to the heart of what UX design is all about, going through a process to solve a user's problem. So if we take a look at one of the case studies, nice intro here. They even go into challenge, the role, the project time. And it's just clean. I think the great thing here is they isn't, they'll just show the finished product. They share in detail all the methods and processes that got them there. It's so really, really in depth. Let's look at this one. Okay. This is a little bit more of a custom, I would say, design for a website. But the great thing here is the visual storytelling. I think what really stands out is the visuals that support the narrative that she's weaving. All these little things over here. You see this like crown that she has. If we go into the one of the case studies, she does a really great job of going through like designs, having these little notes on the side. So like I said, each point in her case study is illustrated with some kind of visual element. Maybe it's a wall of post-it notes, a survey form that was sent to research participants, or even early stage prototypes. It's just really nice. I love these kind of little notes on the side. Let's see if there's another one here. Yeah, same thing. It's just, it's a consistent visual story that she's telling here, consistent narrative. Let's take a look at another. I think this one is really great as well. Very simple. Olivia really kicks off her case studies. So we have, let's take a look at this one. She kicks off her case studies by framing the problem in a personal, relatable way. which is what she's done in this intro as well. She doesn't just talk about the user problem. She frames it as like our problem. So kind of inviting the reader to step into the user's shoes, just as she has done. If you have like case studies that you want to showcase, you should really demonstrate your approach to problem solving. You know, kick off each case study by framing that problem in detail using emotive language to convey empathy and refer back to the problem throughout. Okay, what do we got here? This one's great. I think there's a lot of things she does really well with her projects. It's very simple. As you can see, like your portfolio doesn't necessarily need to be super over the top. If I go into the case study, one thing I really like about it is that like, I think she gets over the issue that sometimes people have with measuring and demonstrating the impact of their work. How do you know you've improved the user experience? She does a really good job here, listening right at the beginning. And once again, really simple way of laying out the most important part 
of the case studies and making sure everything is readable, especially these portions here. Let's see what we can see at the bottom here. We also have the validation, the challenges. It's great. Okay. So Verichen, this one is another great one. I think she does a really good job of providing context. She doesn't just outline the problem statement for each case study. She allows you to understand through giving a solid backstory, describing the events that led her there. So let's take a look at this wedding library project. Once again, this project background is really well designed. Working as the only designer in the team, I designed and prototyped the first version of a wedding service platform for a Seattle-based startup from April to June 2018. So they talked about the design system, what they've done. Really great. She also clearly explains her role in each project, who she worked with, what design and prototyping tools used, which is great. So another good example of providing the context ahead. And then I really like this portfolio because your design skills don't just stop at the case study. Look at how Zara over here did a great job of designing their entire portfolio. A lot of her case studies are around the fashion industry, and that's fine. But even her portfolio looks like it belongs there as well. She gave a lot of thought to her color palette typography choices because they do match. So when you're considering even building your site, think about how you want it to look. Do you want it to be minimal? Do you want it to match the type of industry you're going for? How do, are your case studies laid out? Are they simple, easy to read? Are you providing enough context? Are you providing metrics? Do you have some sort of, you know, really good way of telling that story? Or in, in Elizabeth's case, is it really, really interesting the type of visual information that you're showcasing here? And these are some great examples of portfolios that I really love. I love how simple some of these are, and I love how they can tell their story.